Hi, I'm Glenn Jewis. Welcome to episode 37. And this week I want to show you how just by using a few Lightroom and Photoshop techniques, we can turn a bad picture into a great picture. Okay, so to kick things off then, we'll start off in Lightroom. Now on screen, you can see kind of like the before and the after. The image on the left-hand side is the one that was what I considered to be a throwaway image, something that I just wasn't gonna do anything with. But now, like I said in the intro, we're gonna go through some techniques both here in Lightroom and in Photoshop to turn it into the image that you can see over on the right-hand side. So there's a lot to cover. So let's first of all kick off in the develop module. As you can see, this is one of my uh, invisible black backgrounds pictures here we've used two lights on either side two strip lights either side of our model here or our kickboxer so first of all I want to bring out some details so over on the right hand side then let's try and whack up the shadows see if that brings up much not really that much we're gonna really have to have to bring the blacks up here to get anything out of this because it is such a dark underexposed image when we do that we can see that the right hand side of the screen here the right hand side of the image is actually brightening up more than the left hand side so it shows it wasn't a complete black background anyway there was going to definitely be something in there but the great thing now is now that we can start to see something coming through in the background we're going to be able to add some texture into that now I want this actually to be brighter than what it is I don't want to use the exposure too much because that can be really quite hard on uh, particularly on the highlights and tend to blow them out so I'm only going to touch that a little bit but I think what I am going to do is just get an adjustment brush and I'll press uh, O to bring up the light the mask Actually, I can use that over in the whoops on the bottom left hand corner here as well. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to whack up the shadows, and again, let's just reduce the sharpness down. Let's just bring up the shadows, uh, yeah, something like that. Increase the size of the brush, and I'm just going to paint over the entire image like so. So the whole of the image now is now going to have like a, a double whammy. It's going to have more of those shadows brought in. So let's just get rid of the mask there, so we can see. That's before and that's after. So we can see there's more detail coming in. Right, so the next thing I think I'll do is let's actually just, uh, let's brighten his face up. So again, a uh, adjustment brush. And I'm just gonna, let's just reset these, double click on the word effect. It resets all the sliders to zero. So I think what I'll do here is bring up the shadows and maybe just a little touch there on the exposure. Decrease the size of the brush. I'm just going to paint over the little bit of the face here because there's definitely more we need to bring out in the face. So I can just play around with the exposure in that part there. Not too much. Yeah, around about there is looking good. Liking that. And I think the next thing as well, let's get another new brush. These shorts that he's wearing, these are those typical kind of boxer shorts that have got quite a nice sheen to them. But again, because of the lighting here, we've not really managed to sort of bring out much of the shine on those, that material there. So we can do that using clarity. So with a new brush, let's make sure that the mask overlay is selected. We'll paint over the, um, paint over the shorts, just quite a slapdash like that. We can then use the erase. And let's just bring up the size of the brush and we'll just paint it off the areas where we don't want to be affecting. Just quickly bring that in just there. And on the other side, something like that. Press O to remove the red overlay. And all I'm going to do is just bring up the shadows to touch, but it's the clarity here that's going to really bring out some brightness and kind of impact on those shorts. That's as much as we can do, but now what I can do in this version of Lightroom is bring my cursor over into where the actual pin is that's actually applying this adjustment and then right click on it and we get the option to duplicate. So we're kind of like doubling up on the effect there. So that's looking pretty good. All right, so let's come out the adjustment brush. Let's just zoom in on our uh, guy here just for a second. There's a few little blemishes that I want to remove. So again, we'll now use uh, an adjustment tab on the right-hand side. We'll go to the spot removal, and I'm going to use it in the heel setting over on the right-hand side. You can see where it says uh, just heel, just here. Paint over any of these spots, and Lightroom does a great job automatically of choosing an area. I would say 99% of the times it's going to do a pretty good job of choosing the correct area of skin or whatever it is that you're working on to cover over that particular part. So let's just quickly zoom around, just removing some of these really obvious blemishes. I can hold my spacebar, click and drag and move around the image. It wasn't too many, but just those ones on the main chest area just there. Let's just get rid of that one a little bit there as well. Okay, come out the spot removal, press the space bar to go to full screen. 
And I suppose the last thing we could do at this stage is maybe just, just do the white balance. Let's just for the sake of it, click on the background. That warms it up quite nicely, but we'll bring that down just a touch. Let's just bring the blues in just a bit to cool it down just to around about there. And I suppose we could also do some sharpening here as well. So let's get the sharpening slider. This is gonna be quite a grungy detailed picture so we can afford to do a little bit more. So I'm gonna take that to around about 90-ish. Now, like I've done in other videos, you know that when you bring up the amount on the sharpening here, the whole of the picture is being sharpened. We only want it on the main features of the picture, which is our model here. So to limit it down, what we can do is hold down our Alter Option key, click on the masking slider, and when we do that, it appears white, meaning all of it's being sharpened. And as I start to drag it over to the right-hand side, black is introduced into the picture, which means those areas aren't being sharpened. So we can limit it now to see that it's kind of like on the outline of our model here certainly on those, those shorts that have got that shine and a bit on his face so maybe around about there is looking good so the background now has got no sharpening applied to it at all all right so now that i think that's probably enough that we uh, need to do in lightroom so let's now send it over into photoshop we're going to work non-destructively this is something that you want to get in the habit of doing now so that you can go back and make changes at a later date without having to redo lots and lots of work so let's send this over into photoshop as a smart object so we'll go to the menu at the top choose photo edit in and the option we have here is open as a smart object in photoshop we'll click on that and that'll send us over into photoshop all right, so now we're here in Photoshop. Well, you can actually see one of the reasons why I didn't like this picture originally was because the way the lighting from one of the strip lights over on the left-hand side was hitting his body. Now, this guy's in really good shape, but because of my lighting hitting his arm, it's a cast of weird kind of shadow here, which makes it kind of look like his waist has got this bit sticking out. So it didn't have that. So what we can do is we can get rid of that quickly in Liquify. So we can use Liquify as a smart filter. We've already got a smart object now. Now, so I'm going to go to the filter menu at the top and we go liquify. When we come into liquify, let's just get the magnifying glass and click and drag to come into here. So this is the area we want to move. Now I'm going to use the forward warp tool, which is the one in the top left hand side of the screen. It's the most common tool that people will use in here. But to make sure that nothing else gets affected apart from the area I want to work on, which is this part of the waist, we're going to use the freeze mask tool over here down in the bottom part of this toolbar on the left hand side. And I can then paint over areas that appear. Whoops, I need to just make sure it says over on here, show mask. There we go. I can now paint with this red overlay which is kind of going to freeze this area or protect it from being pushed around when I'm um, using the forward warp tool because that can tend to affect other areas nearby so let's just come over there so it doesn't affect his navel and just that part there so what we can do now that this area is protected is go to the forward warp tool and use quite a decent sized brush because the bigger the brush the easier it's going to be to make changes without it looking really obvious so now I can just come in and start to push in to manipulate this part of his waistline to drag it in a little bit to get rid of that bump now decrease it a little bit and we'll bring out that top part I don't want to get rid of it completely or it's going to look really artificial, but we certainly kind of drag it in just a little bit to uh, take away that bump. Something like that would be good. Okay, let's now let's get rid of the uh, mask. So we click in there to get rid of mask. And I've done a video on the liquify tool, so definitely check out the playlist there that's called Retouching Techniques, where we go in depth about how to use all these fancy things that we've got in liquify. But one of the things we can do is click on the reconstruct here. This is almost like fade. Uh, that we have within Photoshop, the fade slider. Because we can now use this slider to drag it so we can go bring it backwards and forwards. If we think we've gone too far, because liquify you can sometimes go a little bit too far too soon. So with this one here, it gives you a little bit of flexibility to bring it back just a little bit. So we can bring that slider all the way out, uh, all the way down. So I'm gonna leave it all the way down. I'm quite happy with the result we've got. So we'll just click cancel there. We'll click OK and then we'll head back over into Photoshop. All right, I think uh, the next thing I'm going to do, if I just zoom in just a little bit, you'll see why, I, uh, you know, another reason why I didn't like this picture initially was because the shadows that were created by having the arm blocking off that side light, we've got just a little bit of the light catching this part of the body. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going to add a blank layer, get my clone stamp tool. Let's just choose the clone stamp tool. 0% hardness there. Make sure there's no settings in it. That's fine. And then all I'm going to do is just 
sample area of the background just to the side of it. So I'll click and then I'm going to paint that over like so, just to get rid of it just a little bit rather than being standing out because before it just didn't look right, that bit of light catching that part of the skin. So something like that, let's just zoom in. Yeah, that looks fine, okay. Jolly good, let's just rename our layers and we'll call that um, catch light, something like that, just so I know what it is. So now that we've done that then, the next part we'll do, let's just double click on the hand tool to see the whole picture. This is, this is now the advantage of being able to see a little bit of this background coming through here, this gray background area, because now we can do some textures. Now, anybody who's watched any of the videos before will know that I love using this Adobe Paper Texture Pro from the Adobe Exchange. So we'll click on that. It brings up the Adobe Paper Texture Pro, all these free textures we've got to use. And I'm now gonna click on these to start adding them into the picture. So that's really cool quite nice already without that and without it makes a nice difference makes it look as if actually is in an area where he stood near a wall now it's got like a blue tint on at the moment I don't want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the thumbnail of the actual texture then go to image adjustments and desaturate because I only want this to appear gray so something like that's looking good now at the moment we're getting that texture onto our uh, kickboxer here as well but not a problem we're going to sort that out just in the moment but we'll just add maybe one more texture so we can experiment some where let's go for yeah, let's try this one at the bottom here see what that does for us quite like the patterning see I'm not bothered about the coloring here because I'm going to get rid of that but I like the unevenness of the shadows it's rather than it being like a uniform colored background or a uniform kind of like lighting this makes it look very very different and interesting so yeah I'm liking that so again I'll click on the thumbnail we'll go to image adjustments and desaturate and we can play around with this. Let's just zoom in to see what that's actually given us because we can play around now with overlay blend mode. Let's see what that does for us. Not really much difference, so we might as well leave it a soft light. Okay, so we'll zoom out. Let's now take the texture off our model. So the upper layer, the upper texture here selected, hold down the shift key, click on the one beneath it, and we'll create a new group from layers, which we'll call texture. And then all we need to do is add a layer mask from the bottom there, the layers panel, get a black brush. Uh, let's just make sure there's no settings on the brush. Let's just turn off smoothing. And then all I'm going to do is just paint over with that black brush at 100% opacity, just quickly paint over the areas of the skin and little bits of the hair that we don't want that texture to be on. So we can just very, very quickly paint it down there like so. Great thing is as well, because we're adding these textures, you're not really going to see if you go too far over the edge. It's all going to add to the kind of like unevenness of the background, but that's looking pretty good. And what I really love about doing this, I'm a big fan of using textures all over the place, but what's great is we've added in this background, but if I zoom in here now, all these fine hairs on top of his head, no selection whatsoever, but it just looks natural the way that that kind of person now is stood in this background. It makes it look as if that texture really was there, and I love that. In fact, let's just make sure I've not missed anywhere out on the actual layer mask. So over in the layers panel, I'm going to hold down my uh, all or option key and actually click on the layer mask and now I can see what the layer mask is like I can see I've got this little bit here that I've missed so let's just make sure I've got my brush and we'll just come in and we'll paint that off just there like that alter option key click on the layer mask to go back to the full screen view again so now comes the part that's going to make all these highlights on our model kind of make sense to somebody who's not a photographer and not a researcher. When they look at it, they're going to understand now why these highlights are there because we're going to add in a fake light source. And this is probably the easiest light source that you'll ever add in. Let's just close that down. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to add a blank layer. I'm going to get a brush, making sure that my foreground color is set to white because this is going to be a nice, simple light source. And again, we'll make sure there's no settings in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a smallish kind of dab right in the center of the screen. Then I'm going to go to Edit and Free Transform to get the transform handles. Hold down my, sh my Shift and my Alt key or Shift and Option key. Click on one of these handles now and drag it right out to get a nice big light source. Because it's not the center that we're interested in, it's the bit on the outside edges, the kind of like the feathering off bit that's going to give us that realistic looking light source. So I can click now and drag this up over into the top right hand corner sorry yeah some top right hand corner get me left and right it's mixed up here so something like that will be fine 
And now to the lay person, they've got this light source which is coming in. It makes sense that he's got highlights on his face and highlights going down his arm here. So that's looking pretty good, quite like that. Now he's got highlights on the other side of his face, so we need to have some light source over on the other side of the picture as well. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate that layer by pressing Command or Control J. Then I can get my move tool, click and drag that one over now. And we'll position that just a little bit higher up, just so there's a little bit coming in that top left hand corner. Now it's starting to make sense with all those kind of uh, highlights coming in. Now again, in a previous video, you've seen that I like to use something called thingies to make the lighting just a little bit more interesting. So I wanna make it look as if there's some kind of like fragments of dust in the light source. So I'm gonna to go to File, Open, and I've got a file here that I've called thingies, which is uh, basically sort of photographing rain as it's coming down towards the camera uh, when it's dark at night, and you can do this kind of effect. Again, there's a video on that. But this is the kind of effect here of photographing with a, your on-camera flash, photographing rain as it's coming down. And we can use that, let's just click and drag it over into our image now, we can use that to add in special effects on our light source. Now that's too big there, so let's just uh, press Command T to get the transform handles and Command Zero to see all of the transform handles there. Then we'll just drag it down to rescale it, something around about there is looking good. Now at the moment we've got all the dark and light parts. I only want to see the kind of light part, uh, the light parts, all these little specks of dust. So I can change the blend mode from normal to screen, and that gives us that effect here. And I really, really like what that's doing there. I could actually lower the fill slider here just so that there's, there's just traces of these kind of specks of dust in the air. I might actually want to uh, maybe reduce them off the lower part because you're generally only going to see these specks of dust and stuff floating around mainly towards where the light source is and there's nothing on the bottom part so let's add a layer mask and we'll make sure our foreground color is black which it is and we'll get a gradient and I'm going to go for the gradient which is foreground to transparent so that allows me then to keep adding multiple gradients with art rather than keep replacing it every time I put one down and I'll just take it off the bottom part something like that that's looking fine all right, the next thing I think I'll do, and this is all just kind of play now, because you know what we're doing here is just trying to make the best of a bad job. You know, this was a poor picture. There's definitely something we can do to it. So I think what uh, what I might do, you know, this guy's a kickboxer. He's going to go out and have a fight. It's generally like a bit of a smoky kind of atmosphere. So let's add in some kind of fake smoke to this as well. So let's just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to add a blank layer. Now I've got my foreground and background color set to their default. If yours aren't, just press D and it'll set them to black and white. Then we're gonna to go to filter, render, and we're gonna use clouds. Now when you use this, generally, they're not the best looking clouds, you know, it just, just doesn't look like it at all. But what we can do is just get the rectangular marquee tool, drag out a small kind of squarish area in the middle, really small area like so, then go layer, new, layer via copy, or you've got the keyboard shortcut of Command and Control J. So we'll click on that, and what that does is put that little selection up on its own layer. So now we don't actually need the one that had all of those kind of fake clouds in, so I'm just gonna delete that. Now I'm gonna get my free transform, so edit and free transform, shift and alt or shift and option and drag this out. So now we can drag these uh, fake clouds way bigger now, something like that, and now they're gonna to start to look a little bit more realistic. So when we lower the opacity, we can get just a subtle touch there of just a little bit of smoke in the environment as well. It doesn't have to be much. I mean, I'm taking this down now to five or 6% opacity, but if you turn it on and off, there's just something there which I quite like. Now, before we do any more, let's just uh, rename our layers so we know exactly what's done what. Now, these two layers just further on down here, these added in the light source. So let's click on one, hold down the shift key and click on the one below it. Come to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel, a new group from layers, and we'll call that lights. And then just above it, we've got our thingies. So we'll double click on the thumbnail, sorry, the name of the layer there and rename it to thingies. And at the top one here, we've got smoke. 
Okay, so the next thing I think I'll do is just going to desaturate it. I'm a big fan of desaturated colors within images. So I'm just going to, there's, I mean, there's lots of ways you can do that in Photoshop, but I'm just going to use a, a gradient map. But I'm making sure before I do that, I'm going to press D on my keyboard to make sure my foreground and background color are at their default of black and white. So now I'm going to go to the gradient map straight away. I get quite a nice black and white. Now I'm not going to go into all the details about how you can tweak this even further, but you know, you can click on the gradient and then play around with these sliders on this gradient bar just down here but definitely again check out a previous video in fact I think we did that on the last week's video episode 36 so there's my black and white don't want it to be completely black and white so we'll just back off the opacity we'll take it down to maybe something like 30 percent let's just turn that on and off yep 30 percent is fine it just takes the edge off it just a touch in fact let's go to 35 something like that that's looking fine all right, so now we've done that, then the next thing I want to do is add in some special kind of like uh, coloring into here to give it the environment as if, or sorry, give it the look as if he's in somewhere where there are all these different lights around. And that's going to really change our picture now because it's the shadows, the coloring that really adds the feel and the mood and the atmosphere. So we're going to do that by going to layer, new fill layer, and we're going to use a gradient. And when we do this, I'm not going to bother calling it a name just a minute. We'll just click OK. That then brings up the gradient fill dialog box when that comes up where we've got this gradient at the top if we click on that we then get the gradient editor and then I'm going to go one two three four fifth one along I mean you could choose any of these because you can change the colors and all that kind of stuff but a good starting one is the fifth one along we'll click on that and this is going to give us this orange to kind of like purpley kind of color at the bottom here I want this to look as if you've got a light source in the top right hand corner like an, a brightish light and a bluish light over on the left hand side because the two together will really add to the feel of the picture so the orange is kind of okay to change the color of the purpley color let's just click on the little tab there that then um, brings this little color tab here alive so so I can now click on that and get the color picker. So now let's just bring it down to a blue. You can see in real time as it changes in the bottom part of the main work area here. And we'll just choose a blue, something like that will be fine. Click OK, click OK there. And then now we're back to the gradient fill dialog box. And this is where we can use this little disc to decide which direction we want the light source coming in. I want it to be coming in from kind of like the right hand side of the picture. And then we'll click OK. Obviously we can't really see the effect at the minute, but if I change the blend mode of this layer to something like soft light, now we can kind of get a feel for what it is that we want. So let's just reposition that light. Orange is a bit too much in the picture. So I'm gonna double click there on that icon of the uh, gradient. Then I can move my cursor actually into the picture. Click and then drag up and down something like this to move the actual gradient. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit. So I only want a little bit of that gray, that sort of um, gray, that orange coming in. And now you can see we've got this contrast of having these nice kind of orange in one corner and this cooler blue light in the other. So it's completely changing the look of the picture. Let's just change the angle just a little bit. In fact, I think that orange is just a little bit too saturated. So let's just click on the gradient editor, click on the little icon there and then click on the orange and then we can get our disc just to desaturate it. If we go to the left, when we've got this, when you're choosing a color and you've got this big color picker box up here, you choose your color from the bar that goes up and down. That's like a stretched out color wheel. But then you've got the disc within this big square where you can decide if you want the color desaturated or really saturated if I was on the right hand side. Lighter to the top, darker at the bottom. And we'll go for something. We can really play around with this now, but it's got to have some kind of, that about there, that looks better. Yeah, I'm liking that. Click OK, click OK, and click OK again. Lots of different boxes there to get rid of. And then I'm going to use the opacity just to back that off just a touch. Something like that. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. That's working. Let's just see before, after, before, after. Huge difference that just adding a little bit of a lighting effect in there can make to your picture. All right, I guess we're, we are pretty much there now. There's not much else I want to do. Maybe add just a little bit of a contrast to this picture as well to finish it off. But do you know, now is a perfect example of why it's good to work non-destructive. And this wasn't planned. You know, I've got to the end of the picture here virtually. And I've thought one thing I should have done. 
a little bit of dodging and burning. No idea what I didn't think of it, but it's not a problem for me to add it in way down the layer stack because I've worked completely non-destructively so far. What I want to do, if I just zoom in on the picture here, I want to make his abs stand out just a little bit more. And I'm going to do that using dodging and burning. So way down in the layer stack, what I'm going to do is click on the uh, layer here that's called catch light, the one where we removed that little bit of uh, light kicking onto the side of his body. I'm now going to add a blank layer. This is where I'm going to place it in because uh, it's underneath it. It's all underneath all these lighting effects and stuff. So right at the very, very bottom almost. Add a blank layer and I'm going to call that D and B, dodge and burn. And then I'm going to go to edit, fill, and I'm just going to fill that with 50% grey. And because I'm working on skin, don't worry about all these colour effects here. That's purely because of everything else above it. If I turn off the layer now, look, you can see it's all completely grey. Uh, and then change the blend mode of this layer to soft light because I'm only going to be doing this on skin. And I'll turn everything off above it. So now we can see exactly what we're doing on this dodging and burning layer here. So I'm going to press uh, O on my keyboard to get the dodge tool over in the toolbar here. At the top of the screen, just leave it on where it says range, leave it on mid-tones, exposure 10%. You know, I've covered all this kind of stuff before in other videos, but I'm just going to use highlights and shadows to make his abs stand out. Now, we've already got some that we can work with. We can see a little bit. So I'm going to brighten up the highlight areas and darken down the shadow mid-tone areas, and that's going to give me much more contour into his abdominals. So I'm just going to put a few strokes on the highlights. Wherever I put a highlight, I hold down my Alt or Option key to flip over to the Burn tool, and then I can add in some burn strokes as well. So let's just add in, just playing around here, just sampling it around, just to kind of add in and darken down areas, brighten up areas to add some shape, to give him a bit more of an abdominal kind of region here, as opposed to, to being what it's like at the moment. Now you're not going to probably see really the effects as, as you're doing this. There's not much that we need to do here anyway, but you're probably not going to see it while you're doing it. So the thing is here is the trick is to kind of look away, then look back and you'll see it. Also zoom out on your image and then turn that dodge and burn layer on and off. And you can see there, I mean that's taken seconds, we've now added in just some definition there on his abdominals. I've done very, very quickly of course. If you think that's too much, we can just lower the opacity just a touch as well. But I'm quite liking that. Something like that. It just makes his abs stand out just a little bit more. So let's just zoom out, turn that on and off. We can see now that's just made a little bit of impact. But the main part I wanted it to be on was the abdominals. So now let's all go all the way back up to the top here, turning all these layers on so we can see now we've got our lighting effects in. Let's just finish off by adding a little bit of contrast in. And I'm going to use the uh, Unsharp Mask Filter to do that. Now, you know, we're looking at working non-destructively here. So ideally, I'd want to put all these layers now into a smart object so that we can then apply that filter. But I'm, only, I'm not going to do any more after this. So there is no real benefit for me doing this smart object. So all I am going to do is create a merged or stamp layer at the top of the layer stack. Big keyboard shortcut of Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift and E. Or we can just go to Select Menu, Choose All, Edit, Copy Merged, and then simply Edit and paste. So that does exactly the same thing now. So at the top of the layer stack, we can see we've got a merged layer. If I turn every other layer off, nothing changes because the layer at the top of the layer stack is a combination of everything below it. Then we'll go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And I love using contrast in this, uh, sorry, adding contrast in this way because it doesn't do any kind of color shift and very, very limited amount of halos if we really do push it. Now I'm just going to change the amount to something like 20 and I'll get the, the radius generally I'll have the same as well. So 20 on each threshold I'll leave at zero. Let's just zoom in just a touch and we turn this on and off before, after, before, after. We can see there's a nice bit of contrast, no change in the coloring, no halos. So we'll click OK, zoom out. I don't want it on the background, so I'm gonna add a black layer mask, get a brush, and then we'll just with a white brush at 100% opacity, paint it in onto our subject. So there we go, that's it. That's just a very, very quick run through of some kind of techniques that you could use on a picture that's gonna turn something bad into something definitely usable and something that I would most certainly put into my portfolio. We go all the way down to the bottom of the layer stack here, we turn every layer off. That is what we came in with from, um, from Lightroom. And because it's a smart object, we can double click on that go all the way back and we can make changes within here as well. So completely non-destructive, apart from that bit right at the very end where we added that merged layer just to add a small amount of contrast. Okay, so there you go. Again, you can see it's pretty quick and really simple there 
to show how we can make uh, something which ordinarily would be a throwaway picture and turning it into something that's actually portfolio worthy. Now what I'm not doing is suggesting that we get kind of sloppy with our photography because hey we can turn anything into something good nowadays. That's not the case. It's always been and always will be that getting it right in camera is the most important thing. But what this kind of illustrates is the fact that what would have ordinarily been a throwaway picture, something that you wouldn't even considered working on, you now can because nowadays cameras are capturing so much information on the great sensors and with the technology in Lightroom and in Photoshop we can now bring it out and do a lot more with it. Also I suppose what, the, what I'm also suggesting here is that you know when you first did these shoots and those pictures that you thought weren't very good you kind of left them to one side over time now, you know, you've been going online and looking at tutorials, magazines, going to seminars, and your skill level has increased. So you may not have been able to do something with those pictures, you know, a week, two weeks, a month, or a year ago, or even longer. You might not have known what to do with it. But now your skill level has increased, you kind of have a, an idea now what you can do to bring some details out. And hey, this is like the modern day recycling. We're in a recycling culture these days, so this is like recycling for the photographer and the retoucher. So be green, don't throw any of your files away. You know, I've just had a, I'll do some videos on this at some point, but I've just had a whole new backup system installed and we've got terabyte upon terabyte of storage. So nowadays, we don't have to throw everything away. So I'd say keep everything, you know, be green, keep all the files because you never know, one day you might be able to do something with it. I get a lot of friends who get, I've got a lot of friends that get frustrated the fact that, you know, the weather over here has been really bad, they can't get out and do some photo shoots. Those are the days when you can't get out and do something that you should look at your old files on all your hard drives and just see if there's something you can have some play with. So that's hopefully some food for thought. Uh, I'm sure like me you've got plenty of files that were throw away that you could maybe do something with. So just something to, uh, to consider uh, when you've got a bit of downtime maybe. Now a few more other things to, uh, to mention to you. First of all is my newsletter. Now thankfully you know, a lot of you guys have actually signed up to it but if you haven't signed up for it, if you go to the website you'll see the little uh, icon there in the menu at the top of the screen. If you click on that, when you subscribe now to the newsletter you'll also get a link to download a free special effect Photoshop brush that I've made and this is one that will allow you to kind of give the illusion of uh, snow and debris. So you just go to the newsletter, sign it up and then you'll see on the confirmation page there that you can directly download it and install it into Photoshop and there's even a little video there which actually was one of the episodes of this podcast that shows you how to use it. Now if you've already subscribed in the next newsletter coming out in about a week and a half's time you'll also get the link to download it. Uh, CHNO, there's, there's something else I want to tell you about. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to do more videos about this. I mentioned about the new backup system that I've got. It's a very good friend of mine called Chris Fields who owns a company called CHNO Technology. Now, for now, all I want you to do is just make sure that you go to Chris's website, which is chno.co.uk. Lots of information on there, but click on his link to the blog because Chris not only kind of tells you about the kind of products that he deals with, he also writes a lot about solutions. And what I really like about Chris is, he doesn't just say, you know, you want a backup system, use this bit of kit, that'll be your solution. Because if you're anything like me, I just didn't know how, you know, what solution did I need. Chris is kind of like able to make bespoke setups for photographers and retouchers. So definitely check that out. But like I mentioned, we're going to be, in some, uh, going to be doing some videos with Chris in the near future so you can get to meet him and also see exactly what he does and how he approaches helping photographers and retouchers. Um, and before I go, there's always a couple more things. It's like a Steve Jobs presentation. One more thing. Uh, the UK Photography Show, we're now on Wednesday. Coming up this Saturday is the UK Photography Show. It's the first of its kind. If you're going there, I'll be there. I'm teaching on the Adobe stand on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. I've got two sessions each day. So please come by, say hello. It'd be great to meet you, especially if you watch these videos it's always nice to meet people that uh, support and kind of get to follow the things I'm doing both on the videos and on the site um, and lastly I really appreciate it the only support I ask is that you should just subscribe to these videos just click on the subscribe link so that you don't miss out on any of the videos you know we're in a kind of sharing kind of culture nowadays social media is the big thing and this is kind of like what I like to do just share the videos out so all I ask is just subscribe to them and that's the support that's all you need to do all right but also let other people know about it anybody that you think might like to benefit from seeing the videos that I'm posting uh, and also the weekly show and anything else that I post out 
But this is it now. I'm actually finished. Uh, I shall, yeah, that's it. I'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.